Hello and welcome to Dr. Clay's chemistry lesson. Today we are going to be looking at rates of reaction. By the end of this lesson I expect you to be able to do the three following things. We should be able to recall what can change the rate of reaction, recall the equation that describes the rate of reaction, and finally we should be able to identify and describe typical graphs for rates of reaction. So the first question we should really ask ourselves is what is a reaction? Well, here we have four examples below. We have a mixture of compounds and elements on the left hand side which collectively we can call the reactants and they come together there's an energy change and at some time later they form some different products. And in today's lesson we're interested in how fast those reactions will occur. So reactions can go at all sorts of different rates. For example, firstly we could have very slow reactions. An example could be iron rusting, where iron reacts with oxygen and water. Or we might have a slightly faster, a moderate reaction perhaps. Here we have metal reacting with an acid where we see effervescence that bubbling to produce hydrogen gas or we might have a really fast reaction for example we might have an explosion You could imagine perhaps methane and oxygen in a combustion reaction or something more ferocious. Importantly, however, the rate of reaction depends on one of four main things. Now, I'll give you a moment to think about that and see if you can come up with them. Did you get any of these? Let's see. So, number one, the temperature. Affects the rate of reaction. Number two, concentration. That is how much stuff is dissolved in a liquid or if we've got a gas we might be dealing with pressure. The gases. Number three might be if we added a catalyst or Perhaps you might have thought of, if you were thinking about biology there, you might have come up with enzyme. But in chemistry we're going to make sure we use the word catalyst. And finally, number four, indeed the size of particles. Particularly that affects what we're talking about in a solid. Sometimes we can describe this here as surface area. Good, well done. In the final section we're going to go and look at some typical graphs for the rate of reaction. And before we go on to do that we just need to have a quick look at the actual equation. So the rate 
of reaction of a given e given equation or given reaction can be described as the amount of product form divided by the time taken. Now, it could be product formed or equally it could be reactant used. So the reactant concentration, the amount of reactant would go down with time or if we were talking about product, the amount of product would go up with time. Either one is perfectly acceptable. There. So the final thing that we need to look at in this section is to look at typical rates of reaction graphs. The typical graphs. You can see here we plot the volume or mass of gas produced on the y-axis here and the time taken on the x-axis. So here we're talking about the product produced because that is a concentration going up and there's a couple of things to firstly note. First is it gets to a constant level. Why do you think that might be? Yep, so that is because the reaction stopped and no more product is being produced. The rate of reaction which bit of the graph do you think that's related to? That's right, it's the slope of the graph. So the slope is equal to the rate of reaction. Now, that's important because we can describe some other instances. If I had a reaction and the graph that I plotted looked like this. We'll do it with a solid line. To the same point. How does the rate of reaction in line 2 compare to line 1? That's right, line 2 has a slower rate of reaction. Then line 1, because it's got a less steep curve or a shallower curve. So the rate of reaction is slower. What about if we made less product but had the same rate of reaction? This time I'm going to use a red pen just to highlight this one. So we're going to go as the same rate of reaction as number one, but we're going to produce fewer products, or we've used less reactants. So this time, that's right, we're going to go follow this curve in the same way as number one, but this time, number three has got the same rate of reaction as one, but less product. In class we'll look at some examples of this, but in today's lesson let's just check what you should now be able to do. Here we go. You should be able to recall what can change the rate of reaction. Recall the equation that describes the rate of reaction and finally identify and describe typical graphs for rates of reaction. Okay, this is Dr. Clay saying goodbye for now.